This video will focus on adding dimensions to your floor plan. Dimensions are the small numbers or measurements displayed on elevations, site and floor plans. In Australia, dimensions are always shown in millimetres, whereas in the US, dimensions will be in feet and inches. So be mindful of this when researching online. Dimensions are very significant in that they indicate the specific measurements of critical building and site features, such as doors, windows, and walls, and other built features for proposed designs. When completing dimensioning in environmental design and visual communication, there are set rules to organize and present plan drawings, and this includes that dimensions are to be arranged along three parallel and equally spaced lines, with each line informing the viewer of selected architectural features. This example shown on screen can be sourced from the technical drawing handbook. A link is provided in the video description and more information regarding environmental design can be found from approximately pages 25 onwards. This uh, diagram is presented on page 38. As we can see, it's stating that the first line or the line closest to the drawing shows external features such as windows, doors and other openings. Where the second line is displaying internal features such as internal rooms and wall thickness. And lastly, the third line, that's indicating the overall building dimensions. So these three hundreds are indicating that that wall thickness is 300 mil thick or 30 centimeters thick. And same thing, this 2.4 or 2400 identifying these two windows and corresponding with these two and the 900s identifying that doorway is 900 wide. Dimension lines are the lines below the dimension. These are specifically shown to indicate what the dimensions are referring to. Dimension lines begin with an architectural tick instead of a small arrow that you might be more familiar with in orthogonal drawing, and we'll focus on this a little bit later. Projection lines are the lines that extend from the plan view, and so these ones at the very end, but then also these smaller ones beside the architectural tick. And these extend from the plan drawing to the dimension line. These are included to provide greater clarity to identifying dimensions. Let's begin adding dimensions to our the following floor plan in AutoCAD. So we've got the finished version here, and we're going to be displaying some dimensions upon this eastern face. To add dimensions, first of all, go to the annotation bar on the Home tab, and then select Dimension. What we're going to do is zoom in, and we're going to select the first endpoint, so the first line, remember we're going to focus on the window positionings and the door positioning. So the endpoint to where the window begins and then stretching out, whoops, hasn't done that right, select it again. First point to the second point and then positioning it out. Might go to about there. The third point is should be approximately 10 mil, remembering each grid is made up of one mil and they're grouped into lots of five. This is clearly to distinguish and separate the drawn plan to the dimensioning. Dimensions are always placed outside and do not not to interfere with the overall design. These grids look like they're a bit smaller than they should be. I'll position that there for now. I feel like I haven't positioned that quite right. That's going to be the better location. That's going to be more like 10 mil out. We'll go through to another one. So just selecting dimension. From the first point to the second point and then positioning it there and we'll do one more 
from the first point to the second point and then positioning it there. Notice I'm just using the left click and I can continue to do dimensioning. So once you begin, that's pretty quick from there on. But notice our setup is a little bit different and we need to make some changes compared to this arrangement. So we need to add those architectural ticks. We need to modify the projection lines because at the moment we've got projection lines extending all the way in. And we need to modify our dimensioning a little bit because we've got commas appearing and we've got decimals as well. So to go through and make these changes, we're going to type, I'll just remove, press escape so I'm not in the dimension tool anymore. And I'm going to type in dim style. And this is where those changes can be made. Essentially the dimensions settings. We want to be selecting ISO 25 and then making modifications to this. And it should open up a new tab. There we go. Under this, we want to go through on the lines tab. We don't want to make any changes up here. We just want to make changes to fixed length extension lines and changing the length to 30 and extend beyond dim lines 30. This is to produce a short three mil long projection line that crosses the architectural ticks. So you'll notice those projection lines have been modified a little bit. Now moving to symbols and arrows. And we want to change it from closed field arrows to architectural tick or oblique. I tend to find like I like to use the oblique tick. Also changing the arrow size to 50 to make it a little bit more recognizable and noticeable. This should also change it to approximately 3 mil on length, which is what VCAR is requiring. No other changes need to be made here. Moving to text, and we want to change uh, text height to be, make sure that's 100, which it currently is. That should mean that the dimensions or the size of the text should be about 2 mil in height. It will be centered along the dimension line. Also note, millimeters is not required at the end of each dimension. The other thing we want to do is make sure it's rotating the text so it's running along the same plane as it should be. So align with dimensions. And lastly here, we want to be selecting offset from dim. Make that 50. Just so the dimensions are offset or there's a bit more of a separation. So it's not overlapping for legibility. Fit, we don't need to make any changes. The other one we want to modify is primary units changing it or making sure it's in decimal precision we want to change that to zero this changes the tolerance to the nearest one mil as tradespeople on work sites will work to the nearest one mil um, and don't aren't able to achieve you know tenths or hundreds of a mil we want to change decimal separator to period and that's all the changes we need selecting ok Now we want to go through and complete the second line. This is to identify the wall thickness and scale of the rooms. So that wall thickness there, once again, equally spaced from the first line. Notice that some dimensions are too small to fit between the architectural ticks. These can be placed uh, directly adjacent to the space and that's acceptable. Yet we can also go through and move these dimensions. So if I remove uh, escape from the dimension template and I hover over it, notice that we can do move text only. And so therefore we can position that and position that within there. 
And you might need to do that for wherever it's identifying the room, or sorry, the wall thickness, so we can go through and modify and move that there. Also notice that this one needs to be rotated around, so I'd make those adjustments to it. Remember that all dimensions are recorded in millimeters. So wherever it's saying uh, 920, that is 92 centimeters. Now we want to continue onto the third line. And so that's the overall width. Notice it's trying to do a diagonal. We don't want any diagonals in our design. So I'll start that again, remove that. And what you can be selecting is linear. And so that will force it to sit on a horizontal or vertical plane and be positioning that there. Longer projection lines are also needed to be displayed at the endpoints. And this can be done by just using the line tool. If we look back at our VCAA example here, notice it's not touching the plan drawing and extends just beyond it. So let's go through and add that. I'm just gonna use the line tool, so making sure I'm not touching it, and then just having it, it extend a bit beyond. Oops. In some drawings, and if I look at my other drawing that I've gone through and completed, sometimes you'll need to add angular dimensions. And so angular or radius is, radius is really helpful. And that's similar to being displayed under linear, whereas you've got angular and you've got radius. So for this arched window here, we might be selecting that that has a radius or oh, sorry, angle of 44 degrees. If you haven't done so as yet, move your dimensions to a separate or their own dimension layer. Thin line weights for dimensioning and projection lines to contrast the thicker line weight of the floor plan. This provides greater contrast and therefore clarity. The worst thing to do is keep everything the same color and same line weight as mistakes will be made from the confusion of many intersecting lines. Thanks for watching.